over a thousand years ago, waves of fierce seafaring raiders descended on Britain and had a dramatic impact on life and culture. We know them as the Vikings. I'm Tom Pickles. I'm senior lecturer in medieval history at the University of Chester. Today, I want to talk to you about Viking Age Chester, a significant location in networks that stretched across the North Sea, the Irish Sea, the North Atlantic Sea and the Baltic Sea. The former Roman fortress at Chester was ideally placed to dominate the Irish Sea, which is probably the key to Viking interest in Chester. By the 10th century, the Vikings, Scandinavian raiders, traders, conquerors and settlers, dominated Northern England and the Irish Sea. They were kings in York. They had settlements around the Northern and Western Isles of Scotland, in Cumbria and in Lancashire. They controlled coastal towns in Ireland, including Dublin. A dynasty of Scandinavian kings was seeking to rule both York and Dublin to control trade routes between the Irish Sea and the North Sea. Tantalising fragments of evidence reveal that Chester was a key place for Scandinavians operating around the Irish Sea. Irish ring-headed pins were adopted by Scandinavians as status symbols and adapted to Scandinavian decorative traditions. They're found across the Viking diaspora from the Irish Sea to Russia. Several have been found here in Chester. I'm here at the Grosvenor Museum and I'm very excited to be seeing the Viking artefacts for the first time. Hi Liz, thanks so much for inviting us to the Grosvenor Museum and I understand you've got a really interesting collection of Viking Age artefacts for us to have a look at. Yeah, that's right, you're very welcome. Um, I've got a selection of Viking Age artefacts out of the stores. Um, we have a reasonably sized collection, um, but what I've got out today are these ring-headed pins, which were found at the beach site at Mel's. Um, so they're quite a distinctive Hiberno-Norse type of dress fastener, and you find them in Dublin as well, and on the Isle of Man's that triangle of um, Viking trade. And then here, we've got this really beautiful brooch. It's um, got Scandinavian design, which we call Yelling, named after a place in Denmark, which has um, objects with similar designs where they've been uncovered. And this brooch is found right in the center of Chester, a really beautiful piece of Viking art. And then over there by you, we've got the Castle Esplanade hoard of Viking silver. This was a hoard that was found in the 1950s, just outside the museum, um, all inside that lovely Chesterware cooking pot there. There were about 350 silver coins, um, those beautiful big ingots, um, really weighty ingots, and these little pieces of chopped up silver ingots and hack silver. So a Viking trader's hoard, it has been interpreted as buried outside the walls of the city. Wow, what a wonderful array of items. And I guess this gives us a bit of an insight into what people were wearing in the Viking Age, but also what people were trading for people to wear in the Viking Age, as well as that mixed coin and bullion economy that the Viking traders were operating on across the Irish Sea zone. That's Fantastic. right, yeah. This is amazing. Historians have discovered a few more important clues to Viking Age Chester. The area of Hanbridge, just over the river below us, was organised in Scandinavian units called Karakits in the 11th century. The parish churches of St Bridget and St Olaf here are dedicated to an Irish and a Norwegian saint popular with Scandinavians. Evidence of Scandinavian activities hidden in plain sight here in St John's Church. At the rear of the nave are several fascinating stone crossheads that we really need to take a look at. They're carved on red sandstone from the nearby quarry at Hambridge. Their form is distinctive and derives from Ireland. The forearms of the cross are linked 
by a circle and they're known as wheel-headed crosses. Their decoration dates them to the 10th century and associates them with Scandinavians. This type of monument is found in areas of Britain where Scandinavians operated and concentrations are associated with significant nodes in the trading network. St John's was perhaps a place where wealthy Scandinavian traders created memorials to themselves. Thanks to the Vikings then, Chester became a significant place in transnational networks. Several commodities probably lie behind Chester's wealth, perhaps traded on the river here below St John's Church. Pottery, metalwork, salt, cloth, furs, hides, timber, fish and slaves. The wealth that this activity generated is visible in the extraordinary fact that Chester produced the most coins of anywhere in Britain in the 10th century. All this activity probably explains an infamous royal visit to Chester. To exert his authority over Britain, Edgar, King of the English, travelled to Chester in 973, where six other kings pledged allegiance to him. These kings included a king of the Scots, a king of Strathclyde, and kings of the Britons in what is now Wales. A 12th century history of this event suggests that Edgar was rode up the Dee by these kings to St John's Church. If this detail is true, it may reflect the role of the Vikings in establishing Chester and St John's as the symbolic centre of Britain and Ireland. Thank you.